2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, I guess it was about, let's see, maybe three weeks ago, I uh, mentioned to you, so you should very well be prepared tonight, since I mentioned this about three weeks ago, it might have been four weeks ago, I said that I was going to ask you uh, your favorite verse, the verse that really has touched your life over the years, and we were going to get you to tell us what it was, and uh, we were going to just say a few words about it. <laughs> I really, I did say that four weeks ago, but I didn't say I was going to do it tonight. But I am going to do it tonight. So you should maybe have a verse that uh, really is, you can look back on. Tomorrow I'm going to be speaking uh, to these young men, that basketball guys, um, about trust uh, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. That's all, oftentimes a favorite for people. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Um, <laughs> it's so funny, I had that in my mind, and then I had the... Um, Study to show thyself approved and work that was just coming right at the same time. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and uh, he shall direct, direct thy paths, right? <laughs> that probably shouldn't be my life's verse, should it, since I don't well, I do, I do, I do know it. It's just my mind was kind of slipping. Anybody want to participate? Yes, Randy? Uh, Luke 18, 27. Luke 18, 27, I have absolutely no clue what that says. And Jesus said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And that's a great verse of scripture. I should have known that scripture. Good, good. And then he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Excellent. all should be able to quote that, shouldn't we? Or quote it for us? I might mess it up. <laughs> for God. For God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Very nice. Very good. I didn't ask you, Randy, if you could quote that verse. I probably should have before you read it. Okay. <laughs> they want us to give us the, the, the huff version. Anybody else? Yes, Jesse. Isaiah 6 8. Nah, what the Lord said, I don't think I quoted that exactly. Sorry? That's the Jesse version. That, that sounded, you gave us the gist of it. Another great verse, right? Isaiah 6 8. Really, who shall go for me? Excellent. Anybody else? Yes. Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. I have to read it. Okay. okay. I remember the whole thing. All right. Um, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. She said Ephesians 3.20. And that, um, she just read that to us, and that, that says, uh, <clears throat> Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Another great verse, right? Amen. Good, good. Yes, Sim. Second uh, Corinthians 5.21. Okay. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Mm -hmm. Actually, me. Who knew no sin? That we may be the right, made the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. Another excellent verse. Very, very good. For He hath made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Good. Anybody else? JJ, you want to give it a shot? No. No. He's too busy with applesauce. All right. Lisa's looking for something. Am, she's looking, she's looking. I can't remember it. Well, yeah. Can you tell us one of the verse, what uh, part of the verse? Maybe we might know it. Um, I can't think of this one. No, it's not. <laughs> 
Patricia. Hey, it happens to all of us. Um, You're not old. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. And Richie, and Richie says it ain't getting no better. So, you know, just enjoy it now. <laughs> you just heard me fumble and bumble. I'm older than you, so. And I'm gonna drink your water. Maybe okay, you can drink right some. Here. Maybe you drink some more water. Maybe. <laughs> I'll find it. Okay. Well, you can let us. You can let us know, and uh, when we close, or you can raise your hand, and we'll we'll, we'll call on you. Okay. This was a perfect time to do that. Why? Because the title of the message. Is tonight remember? Lisa. <laughs> the title of the message tonight is remember. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, it's a good thing that you know. I know that you're not going to leave the church, uh, <laughs> even though we're picking on you tonight. So anyway, the Apostle Peter. Remember, we said I want you to go back in your minds. Um, of course, tonight we're going to look at this word remember. And, uh, and we're going to go back into it and see what he's trying to tell us to remember. And, and really, it's these, these, these principles uh, in the Word of God. And he's going to come down to the end of the chapter, and he's going to tell us that we have a more sure word of prophecy. Um, they're really, we all know that we, we, we face things today, but we don't really have an excuse for things not to know the truth because we have... The full canon. We got all of the Word of God. And again, folks, every last one of us in here, no doubt about it, we all fail. And but we, we, the Word of God doesn't fail. God doesn't fail, but yet we do. And so um, uh, he's going to uh, continue. Oh, uh, uh, first let me let me wait. My other thought. <laughs> what was it? The other phrase I mentioned to you that really this particular chapter dealt with. Basically two things. Um, one was the one word that we're going to look at tonight, remember. And then the other one was really like a three-word phrase. Sometimes it was a little longer because of the name. But what was that? Knowledge of God. Knowledge of God, both of you, same time. Excellent. Knowledge of God, knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you see Paul's prayers and you see what Peter says and you see James and all the other uh, Bible writers, really... The most important thing, uh, I was talking to somebody today, and I can't remember who it was, um, about, um, oh, I was talking to Janie, I was talking to Janie about the Bible reading, you know, and I've been saying this to you in the services, I, I believe it's important to read the Bible all the way through, and uh, I don't think there's absolutely anything wrong with that, I think every believer probably should do that at least one time in their life. But if you do do that and you never get anything that's in the Bible, you know, then it's really not helping you much, right? And so I've been doing this for a long time and different things, and I, I never get some people, you know, you knock on the door, you talk, talk to them, and, and one of the first things that they ask you about you know, church, your church and everything, especially if they've grown up in church and they say, do you use the King James Bible? You know, that's one of the first things that you get. Do you use the King James Bible? I remember Mr. Marley had asked me about that, you know, one time, which is great. Nothing wrong with somebody asking if you use the King James Bible, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Nothing wrong with that. But I learned through the years to tell them, yes, we definitely use the King James Bible, but we don't preach the cover. What do I mean by that? We don't preach the cover. <laughs> what's that mean? Preach we preach what's inside it. We don't preach the cover. I mean, it, you know, I remember, I remember, oh, George Law, bless his heart. George, he's something else, buddy. <laughs> George, he didn't play games. George was one of those guys, he was an old Navy guy, you know, got saved in his late 30s. And man, he'd cry all the time about God saving him. And man, he just, man, he believed you need to preach the book, preach Jesus, and those kind of things. And he was a King James guy. And, and man, he went to one of these camp meetings, and, and he was he was preaching there that time. And, and these guys, you know, uh, got up there, man, and it's just King James, this, King James, that. Everybody's amen, amen. And 
And uh, he got up there and preached Jesus, and uh, and he didn't get any amens. Hardly at all. He said, he said, what's the matter with you guys around here? You, you love the you love the King James better than you love Jesus. <laughs> and he didn't play, and, and and sat down, of course. And the next guy got up there and he started the same thing. And and one of these young codgers tapped old George. He said, now that's preaching right there. <laughs> and he really didn't didn't preach about Jesus, but just basically, you know, trying to get amens. We're not looking for amens unless the amens are about what's in the scriptures. And, and so knowledge of him, knowledge of him, learning more about Jesus, learning more about our Savior. And uh, the Apostle Peter said there was a, a way that we could do that. And of course, we, 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 we talked about these things for two weeks, um, uh, the, the add to. And uh, uh, Peter tells us plainly in, in, in this particular passage of Scripture that, that God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Okay? And uh, then he goes through those particular things, but he said, first and foremost, you have to have, uh, be a partaker of the divine nature, and you have to have faith and uh, belief, trust. And, and so in verse 5, and, and I'm going doing this for a reason because he's going to go on, he's going to say, these are the things we need to remember, right? And so it's so important, you know, I think it was, um, he's got a little book, uh, What's that guy's name up there in New England at the camp? Uh, Rand Hummel. Rand Hummel. Um, uh, he says that you need to um, memorize the scriptures, meditate on the scriptures, and then, but not just meditate, but you need to allow the, the scriptures to master you. Memorize the scriptures, meditate upon the scriptures, and let the scriptures master you or have control over your life. And uh, that's so important uh, because, again, God doesn't draw up an empty well, as I've told you, Pastor Baker used to tell us all the time. And so we mentioned these things. First and foremost, in verse 5, he says, um, giving all diligence. You know, I, I, I mentioned there, there's so many different things that you can go after, right, in life. Uh, you can go after all kinds of things. You can give your life to so many different things. Well, Peter's saying that we need to give our lives to the Lord and learning more about him in this way. Giving all diligence. Give your best effort. When this guy comes to fix the air conditioner and, or anybody comes to fix anything, the parking lot, we want them to do their best, right? <laughs> Amen. We don't want them to do a shoddy job. Um, he was telling me that years ago, obviously, somebody had done this. I don't think Steve, I never remember him working uh, on this. So this has been a long time ago. He said somebody put something underneath there, and they didn't even hook it up. <laughs> they just left it. It's just dangling, you know. And so they're planning on putting that back together in whatever way. But you and I never knew it, <laughs> did we? <laughs> you know, we're not air conditioner, and I don't know too many people that want to jump underneath that you know, crawl space down there. Probably all kinds of things under there, you know. And uh, but we want people to do the right job, right? And uh, but God wants us to do the right job too, and He wants us to uh, study and to to learn and give give everything we have. And so He says, "Add to your faith virtue." And we talked about that. That that has the idea of ex excellence, or really manly valor is one of the things that it says. You know, being a man, and uh, and then knowledge, and uh, then temperance which is self-control and uh, then temperance he says patience how many of you in here would say that you need some patience tonight all of us we, we all struggle with these things and then godliness and that's just piety living a godly life and then brotherly kindness and then he says brotherly kindness charity or, or God's love and so this is a process and, and God works through this process. You're not going to be one day go, you know what? I'm completely virtuous. <laughs> you know, I have arrived when it comes to virtue, right? And all these different, you, you name each one. You're not going to come to a place where you say, man, I know it all. I know everything about the Lord, right? It's not happening. And so all of these things, it's a process. And now, should you be better, Right? At, in each thing as you move along, right? But the ultimate goal is what? Perfection. 
perfection, or, or, or what does it say here? What's the ultimate goal at the end? At the end of these things that he mentions. No, no, it goes further than that. Love, love charity, God's love, agape love. Now, folks, listen. Can you say tonight that you truly love like God loves? No, no, it's, but do you realize that that's God's goal for us? To love the way God loves? Now, how is that possible? Only through God. And God doing it, right? Folks, listen, we're, how many of you would be willing to admit tonight that you love yourself? We, we all love ourselves, right? And so, Things happen. I'm going through situations right now, different things, and I'm like thinking I got a handle on it, and blah, 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 and then I find out, oh, man, something bad happens, or this happens, or that happens, and I realize I don't really have God's love like I thought I did. I want to, but I say I want to. <laughs> I probably don't want to, really. Who knows? But we don't have it. But it's a process. It's God leading us to this, and and, and working in our hearts and lives. And so these are things, why I'm saying this to you, is it, it's, it's continual. It's a process, God working in your life. And he comes down in verse 8, and we talked about this too at the, uh, the second message that we have in this past scripture. For if these things be in you, you see, it's an inward thing. You know, you, can, you can't, you can and you can't. <laughs> you can't. Force these things. The things of God, what he's talking about here. You know, you, you can't, like, self-control. This is something you, you know, it has to be inward, you know, to be able to help you outwardly to express that. Does that make sense? And, and it's the same thing with, you can pretend like you have brotherly kindness with somebody. You can pretend like you have God's love, but really... The only way it's really going to be producing something is if it's on the inside. And so that's what he's saying. If, if these things be in you, okay, this is not an outward thing, although all of these things would show themselves outwardly, right? Are you all with me? But they have to be inward, okay? And they all start with belief, faith. Now, sometimes, just like Randy's uh, scripture there, with man, it's impossible, right? But with God, all things are possible. You can, right? You can practice these things with God's help and really God doing it, really. And so he says, if these things be in you and abound. You see how he uses these words? God uses not just, uh, okay, if they're just there, right? Because why? They are there. They are within you because Christ is within you. You do have the power in the Spirit of God and in His might and His ability and all these things. But they're not being exercised. They're not being put into practice. They're not, you're not allowing Him control. And uh, it's amazing through the years. Now, folks, listen. I think, I think a lot. I can look back and, and think about just dealing with people and counseling different things. And I can think about how impatient I am that I've been with people. And I think, man, just talked with somebody today and I thought, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. for, And I know it's God because I know the way that I used to be. I had no real compassion or patience with people. You know, you say, man, you, you as a pastor. <laughs> Listen, pastors have to grow too. Y'all realize that, right? We all have to learn and, and see and you go through, how do you do that? Through trials and circumstances and you learn from them and, and you understand that, that people are in a certain place and, and you just need to help them, you know? You need to be a better listener than talker, you know, and that's hard for pastors too because we talk all the time. And uh, so we got to learn. And, and, um, and, and so, uh, again, God will, will, will work these things out in your life and they'll begin to 
abound. It'll just be the way that you are. And God desires that in our hearts and our lives. And he said, if they abound, he said, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you will gain more knowledge of the Lord. You'll have more fruitful uh, things in your life. And what are those things? Well, the, the fruit of the Spirit. They're love, joy, and peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, uh, meekness. All of these things are, are, are things uh, that the, the Lord, again, showed us in His life. And you begin to learn, again, how He responds and how He responded. And this is what He says after that. He said, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. Now, I talked to several people today, and I said this same thing to every single one of them. How many of you would like or you have situations in your life, and there's probably more than one, okay, that you would love to know how it's going to turn out in the end? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're all like that, folks. We all have this, you know, but... Again, when God begins to work in our lives, when we begin to trust him, we, we understand that, you know, God's going to work these things out. He knows what he's doing, and we don't have to trust ourselves. We can trust him. Uh, th th this, this person here that, that lacks these things in his life, he, he can't see afar off. He, he has even forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. You know, I remember a time listening to some preachers, and they would, they would talk about people and, and say, well, he's not saved, or... He, if he's doing this, he's not saved. And, and, and boy, was it a surprise when I came upon this verse of Scripture and found out that if, you're not, uh, if your faith is not being building and growing and things like that, you can forget that you're even saved. You ever talk to people like that? <clears throat> you ever ran into somebody that says, you know, you talk to them and they're out of church and they're not, you know, following God. And they say, man, I don't even know if I'm saved. You ever talk to anybody like that? I have. I've talked to people. You never have. You're not, shaking, you're not shaking your head, so anyway. Yeah, I mean, I've talked to many people that said, you know, I don't even know, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know if I'm saved or not. And, and somebody would say, this is what we would say <coughs> by the things that we've learned we, in, in, under some preachers and different things, say, well, man, if that guy doesn't know what he's saying, he ought to know, remember when he got saved, <laughs> right? And really the truth of the matter is he probably, again, could go back to a day where he, felt like he trusted Christ, but he's off the path. He's not growing. He's not learning. He's not adding these things. And this is what he says. He said, he lacked it. He's blind. He cannot see afar. He had forgotten that he, look, what does it say, folks? Can y'all say that word with me? Was purged from his own sins. Is he talking to a believer or an unbeliever? Believer. He's talking to a believer. But if believers don't follow the prescription, right? You know, everybody wants to be well, right? But, but if you don't take the, the medicine that the doctor gives you or they tell you what to do, right? It, it's not going to help you, right? You're not going to be well. And that's really what he's talking about spiritually here in that person. And he says, again, in verse number 10, he says, wherefore? Okay, because of all this, because this could happen to you. This could happen to me, right? He says, wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence. There it is again. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Now, that's an amazing statement, isn't it? Isn't it? You know, it's kind of like that song that we sing. We shall never be discouraged. <laughs> Take it to the Lord in prayer. Is that how it says it? We shall never be discouraged. And you're reading that song and you're singing it and you're like, but I'm discouraged right now <laughs> singing this song. But God, that's never happened to you guys. Some of you are saying yeah, yes or maybe it's happened. But we are. But here he says that, and again, he, he's right. If we continue to do these things, and if we stay in these things, this is truth. This is where we'll be. But the problem is not with the Bible, remember? It's not with the Bible, it's with us. We do fail in these things, and we do stop adding to, and, and so that's where, you know, <laughs> look, folks, I ask, I, I'm, 
I'm being a little bit more bold than I usually am with people, but I'm really, in my heart's heart, want to try to help them, okay? So this is what I said to somebody today that texted me, okay? Once again, they, they texted me some things that they wanted me to see this crazy stuff that, oh my goodness, and now I can't even remember what I only, I, I, maybe, I maybe looked at it for maybe a minute or two, so that's why my brain's not, but it was like 30 some minutes long about all the stuff that's been going on undercover, you know, in America, and that people are doing this and this and this, and, and I'm like, I just told you last week, get away from that stuff. Get in the Bible, begin to pray and see God. And so after I did that, I, I sent him back a text and this is what I said. I said, how much of the Bible have you read this week? And how much praying are you doing? Now, this is unusual for me, okay? Because I'm not trying to be, you know what I'm saying? This other stuff's not gonna help them, right? Amen? And so what I'm trying to do is get him, and, and he says, well, <laughs> that's, you already know from the beginning when you get well, right? <laughs> if you get well or you get buzzed, you know we're getting ready to get some religion, right? Goat religion or water religion, okay? Well's a deep subject, right? And uh, so anyway, well, prayer part, I'm really not sure, but the Bible part, I really, I prayed some, but the Bible part, I probably didn't read any of the Bible. I really, this is amazing. He said, I, I, I depend upon what I've already learned so I do meditate on the Bible, but I'm not sure if I've really got it all right. <laughs> so I was like, okay, right? Uh, but we're in terrible shape and all these things, just exactly what the Bible says. And, and listen to me, folks. I believe this person I'm talking to, I believe they're saved. I believe they're a saved person. I really do. But I believe that they not adding to and these different things and, and getting all this other craziness and the world is crazy. Did y'all know the world is crazy? Well, of course it is. So let's just throw that out. Why we gotta see that on the news every single night or we gotta read all about the craziness of the world. Let's just read the Bible. There's good stuff there. Excellent. As a matter of fact, the best thing you can possibly do, right? Amen? And so Peter is saying here all of these things and and he says, you shall never fall. He said, for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto the everlasting kingdom of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and so again, speaking of the, the things in the future and, and, and how God will, will, will bless you and all of these things and these different things. And so he comes down and he's going to, the, the, the next um, uh Five verses, he's going to use this term, remembrance. He says, wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. What are these things? Hello? All the things what? you just said. Yeah, all the things, the, the, the adding to, the, 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 what, how this will profit you that if you're doing these things in your life and he said he said I, I will not he's made a choice here folks not to be negligent to make sure that he's telling them these things and putting them in the forefront of their mind that listen you can't really live for God or walk with God without the spirit of God and the word of God and and and, 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 and these things being established in your life he says again notice what he says here I want to put you in remembrance of these things Though ye know them. You know, this is our problem, folks. Do you realize? I think in my mind that everybody that's in this room right now believes that if you really read the Bible more and you commune with God more and you prayed more, that you would draw closer to the Lord and you would know more about your Savior. Does everybody believe that? It, but... That's what he's saying here. He said, I know you know these things. I know you already know it, but I got to keep reminding you, you know, well, right? Amen. And we got to remind ourselves. Uh, Michael flew out to Texas this morning and he sent me this 
uh, Richie, a, a TikTok, uh, now I'm not a TikTok person, okay? <laughs> but he sent me this little thing on the, um, uh, what's the guy that, uh, uh, his last name Williams for Duke, uh, the, the Christian guy, the guy that got drafted number 14 in the draft, the, the guy that, Mark Williams, right? No, it's not Mark Williams, no, it's the other guy. Oh, it's Griffin. Griffin, yeah. Griffin. Yeah, he sent me this thing on him, and he's got in the background uh, Billy Graham preaching a message on when, you know, people not understanding that when they get saved, that the devil <laughs> is now their arch enemy in the flesh, and he's going to battle you till you die. You're in a war, and you can never let up, you can never... Look back. You got to continue on looking forward. And this whole message is this: this guy uh, uh, Griffith, you know, uh, sharing his faith and and talking about and Christians need to continue to walk with God and be reminded every day that the devil, like a roaring lion, is seeking whom he may devour. You know that word there devour has the idea of gulping down. He wants to gulp you and me down. And uh, he, he runneth to and fro, right? Walking to and fro, that's the key. And then we need to be running and while he's walking, and maybe we'll be way ahead of him. But really, we need to be staying in the Word of God. And so he says, I, he said, I know you know him. And he said, and that you be established in the present truth. Amen? People need to know the truth. He said, yea, I think it meet. And the word meet has the idea of being proper or, or a right place. As long as I'm in this tabernacle or this body to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Now, there's a reason why I say to you, and I've been saying to you continually, you need to be reading your Bibles. Amen. I need to continue to say that. I need to continue to remind you. We need to be reading the word of God that God would help us. Uh, uh, Peter says here, as long as I'm in this body, I know that I need to stir you up, putting you in remembrance, that you need to be adding to your faith these things. You need to understand that God has given us everything. We have no excuse for uh, 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 of, of life and godliness. And it's all found again in what? In the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He is life. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes unto the Father but by him. Right? Amen. So all of those things are found in him. Peter says, I'm reminding you of this. Knowing what? That shortly I must put off this tabernacle, that I'm going to die. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. And we talked a little bit about that. He said, moreover, I will endeavor. Do you see the terms Peter is using here? Diligence. Okay. Not to be negligent. And here he says that, that excuse me, that, um, uh, I'm, I'm missing my word, endeavor, more of I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease that you will have these things always in my remembrance. And I've mentioned to you some of those things. And so as he ends this chapter in chapter one, he comes down and he says this, for we have not followed cunningly devised Fables. Do you know that's what most people, again, follow today? They'd rather live in fantasy than reality. Peter says here, we haven't, this is not, this is not a now lay me down to sleep story. This is not once upon a time. This is the word of God. Peter says here, he said, for we have not followed culling devised fables when, when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. You see, he, Peter's saying here that, hey, they, they saw the Lord glorified. They saw the resurrected Lord before he was ever resurrected. <laughs> they saw it. They saw him. They saw everything in him. He said, for he received from God the Father honor and glory, speaking to the Lord Jesus. When, he came, when se there came such a voice to him uh, from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Peter's saying, I was there. I saw all this. He saw the Lord glorified, really before he was glorified, right? Amen. Before he was even resurrected on the Mount of Transfiguration, Peter was there. Notice as he goes on. And this voice, uh, uh, which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. Now notice what he says here. 
Peter was an eyewitness of the Lord Jesus Christ in his glorification, right? On the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw all this with his own eye. He heard God the Father speak. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. He's saying, I've, I've seen that. I heard this. But there's something better. <laughs> what is it? Verse 19. But we have a more sure word of prophecy. Wherefore you do well to take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. He says you, you, have, you have light right here in a dark world. You want to find out how to see in a dark world? <laughs> Take the word of God down. And listen, folks, you can go to all kinds of places and realize that this is a dark world. There is all kinds of darkness everywhere. But I tell you, the Bible will open up the light to you. Amen. The word of God. Peter says, I saw the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration. I heard, I heard God speak out of heaven. He said, but the Bible is a more sure word of prophecy. Even then, what I saw and what I heard. That's what he says right there. And notice as he finishes. He said, knowing this first, and this is so important about the Bible, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Did you realize there's just... Now, there, now, we can get things wrong, right? All of us can. I was talking to Janie about that today. I, I put this little post on Facebook by Tozer, I think it was either a day or two ago. He talked about, he said that it's literal insanity to follow a man wholeheartedly with everything you have, including himself. And he said the reason that is, is because man, a human man, is fallible. Hmm? Right. That's what the... Listen, so you follow a man and don't follow the Lord, then, then what happens is that man goes off on this tangent or goes somewhere else, and then you're messed up. And so we need to follow a man as long as he's following the Lord. But, but don't follow a man so completely that, hey, you forget what the Bible says. And you're not examining. Tozer says that, hey, listen, examine everything I say. Now, I've said this to you before. I know, and I told Janie this today, I'm not a Tozerite. Now, some people have accused me of that. You're a Tozerite. You know, like a Moabite and uh, all these other eyes. They say, I'm a Tozerite. But I'm not. You know, Tozer believed that speaking in tongues was still for today's church. He did. But I don't. I believe what the Bible says. <laughs> I believe that they're, they're no longer a gift today. I don't believe any of these speaking gifts and this the, the knowledge. I believe that was for that, that time. And I believe the Bible speaks clearly. Now, let me tell you something about that. <laughs> Tozer was a 150 billion percent better Christian than I ever will ever be. There's no doubt in my mind. I in no way, shape, or form would I ever say, man, I'll tell you what, I know more than Tozer. <laughs> no, no, I just believe it was wrong in that area. I believe i got to follow the Lord and follow what the scriptures say about that particular, you know, tongues or whatever it might be. Right? But there is a right interpretation for every scripture, right? Amen? But there's no private interpretation where we say, hey, we, we've, we've locked in. This is, you know, every scripture has its interpretation. And, it's, and, and, and we can't just find our interpretation and make it what we think it ought to be. So all scripture. No prophecy of scriptures, any private interpretation. We can't take it upon ourselves and try to interpret uh, the way we would like it to be interpreted. Okay, verse 21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I've always had a problem with people thinking that man wrote the Bible. You know, I always had this problem. That people actually think that man wrote the Bible. Man did not write the Bible. God wrote the Bible. Man pinned it down. 
but he pinned down what God wanted them to pin down. That's the bottom line. If man would have wrote the Bible, folks, listen, we wouldn't know all this sin and all the mess. <laughs> folks, listen, if you read the Bible, you're like, man, you, you read the Old Testament, folks. Man, they, folks, there's a bunch of sinners. Yeah, just like you and me, <laughs> right? You know, somebody had asked me, uh, we were talking, uh, and of course they, when I say this, they're, they're it's not a, um, a bash on them. They were just saying, because we were talking about rifts that Christians have and different things. They said, man, they said, Paul Paul and Timothy had one too. And it was so thick and stiff and stuff, right? Wasn't it Timothy? What's Timothy? And I said, no, it was Barnabas that, that was there. And I wasn't, and they didn't get upset or anything like that. But it was Barnabas. I didn't want them to keep going on that it was Timothy, you know? They had, man, the Bible says, man, these guys, man, they, they, boy, had a big disagreement, didn't they? And, uh, they had to decide. And man, after we got finished with that conversation, I'm a meditate, meditative person, and so I started thinking about that. And I said, man, I said, who was right there? And I started running through, uh, uh, when I've studied this in, in Bible college, different things, you got different people, theologians that say, Paul eventually came across, and he was wrong, you know, and Barnabas was right, take on John Mark, and what do y'all think? Some people think Barnabas was right. Some people think Paul was right. I don't know which one was right. Do you? I know that John Mark came back later, but he was a deserter, and that's why Paul didn't want to take it. You know, and eventually he did take it. But you know, old Barnabas, man, he was different than Paul, wasn't he? Hello? Was Barnabas not different than Paul? Barnabas, one of those guys, man, he always want to keep giving people chances. <laughs> I like Barnabas, don't you? They were encouragers, you know. It wasn't that Paul wasn't an encourager, but man, he was a matter of fact dude, buddy. He, you know, he deserted us, man. So he he was like, and again, I say to you, I don't really know which one, you know. But I, I tell you what, the Holy Spirit of God told us that, uh, you know, they had this battle, <laughs> you know. I, I don't think men, men, they're, they're usually not truthful like that. I don't think that, that Peter and Paul, you remember when Paul said that he rebuked Peter to the face? That's pretty bold, isn't it? <laughs> think Peter liked that? I talked to somebody the other day, too, about the book of Mark, you know, that it was, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to again, I talked to people. And uh, uh, that it's it's really the book of Mark, and you probably already know this, you might not. It, it's it's really Peter's rendition of what happened. Peter basically told Mark, and Mark penned the book, and so it's really it's Peter. You could say uh, the Gospel of Peter because it's really what it is. Mark has put it in writing, but you know, in there, the amazing thing that you don't find Peter walking on water in, in the book of Mark. I probably mentioned this to you before. I just think that's so interesting. Don't you? If man wrote the Bible... Now, hey, let me ask you all a question. I don't know about you, but if I walked on water, I think I'd tell somebody. I'd tell them everything else that I do is so great. I know I'm going to tell them I walked on water. Right? Wouldn't you? But I believe the Holy Spirit had, had, had humbled Peter. I, we got First and Second Peter to show us that, don't we? Amen. Peter was a, a brash guy. But see, some years later, after all these things, when he gave this narrative to Mark, you don't find in there that he walked on water. <laughs> it's not in there. I don't know why. It could have been he thought about his failure and didn't want that. Who knows? Well, I do know why. <laughs> because the Spirit of God wrote the Bible. These men willingly were born along and they put down the scriptures. What God wanted them for you and I to have. And, and Peter really is ending this after he tells us the things that we need to do. He's saying what you guys have in your hands and what you have in your homes and what you can put in your hearts is something that can be counted upon. More than anything else. Now, 
We think, again, I've said this to you before, and we all think this. We think, man, if I'd have walked with Jesus, I'd, I'd probably do better <laughs> than I do. No, you wouldn't. And really, that's what Peter's saying here. You've got a more sure word of prophecy. Not only do you have the word of God, but we have the indwelling spirit of God. So let's ask the question, is it God's fault or our fault? It's our fault. It's not God's fault. God desires for us to live a life where we're not continually failing and falling. And although we do at times, he, but he desires for us to stay consistent in his word and allow his word to work. Just like you, you, you eat food and hopefully you eat the right foods. Sometimes I don't eat the right foods. Well, maybe a lot of times I don't. But for health, you need the word of God. You need to be growing and adding these things and you need to remember that when you leave tonight you need to remember that these are the things that are important in life God's word growing learning virtue knowledge temperance patience godliness brotherly kindness charity these are the things that I, I need to be having in my life let's stand to our feet Heavenly Father we're grateful for who you are thank you God for letting us be here tonight thank you for speaking to our hearts and uh Father, we pray that uh, everything that we do and say as we leave this place, that we would remember what we've learned tonight, and that we would have more knowledge uh, of our Savior. And uh, may we just, uh, again, uh, Father, help us, help us, help us all, Father, to continue to place our faith and our trust in you, that you're going to do this work. And even though sometimes it seems impossible, Father, we pray that we would trust the God of the possible and the God of the impossible. Lord, we just pray again that uh, you would go with us now, lead God, and direct in everything we uh, do and say for the remainder of this night. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. And thank you, Lisa, for your work.